Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. So for today's video, we are going to do on the scheme called Dairy Entrepreneurship Development uh, Scheme, okay? So basically, we're trying to cover all of the important points which is necessary for the exam under this scheme. And this is actually a very important uh, scheme for dairy development, as well as in the livestock uh, under this animal husbandry, right? And my name is Hansa Nora Sangma. I've done my bachelor's in horticulture and I've also completed my post-graduation in agriculture. So uh, by the end of this video, you're going to know anything that's uh, important from these uh, from this particular scheme which has high chances of coming in the exam so do watch this whole video right so guys if you guys are new to this channel you can also press the uh, subscribe button and do uh, press the bell notification for further notifications from our channel for the upcoming exams right and so that you'll get more guidance through watching these videos that we uh, bring out every day in our youtube channel and if you guys have enjoyed this session you can also press the uh, like button at the end of the video okay uh, all right so uh, now we're going to talk about the scheme okay so under this scheme basically the lives of farmers new updates that come so this lives of farmers they can uh, avail a loan up to rupees seven uh, seven lakh okay so they can avail up to rupees seven lakh from the livestock department for opening up a dairy farm which includes 10 buffaloes okay remember it so uh, basically the 33% 33 sub 33 subsidies will be given to the women as well as in the SC categories whereas if it was for a general category then 25 subsidies will be given for the uh, general category dairy owner okay so um, let's check about uh, more about it so we're going to talk about the objectives under it okay the basic objectives of this scheme is to, to number one it's always the uh, an important objective the first one is always to generate rate the self-employment and to provide infrastructure for the dairy sector okay so basically they're aiming for to develop uh, or to generate more employment and to uh, get more income for these villagers or in the rural settings as well okay so that's number one right so uh, number second is to set up a modern dairy farm for the uh, dairy farms especially for the production of the clean milk okay and uh, number third here says to encourage a uh, here for uh, calf rearing okay so uh, basically here they want to encourage this calf here uh, rearing for the conservation and development of good breeding stock okay so they want to develop this good breeding stock so that can be that particular calf uh, which has been reared will be uh, of a good health with a high superior uh, qu qualities and characteristics okay so that's number third and b number four says uh, so they want to bring a structural changes in an unorganized sector so that the initial processing of the milk can be taken up at a village level okay and number fifth here says the upgradation of this traditional technology and when we say the upgradation of this traditional technology they want to bring out this traditional technology proper traditional technology Technology to handle milk is basically on a commercial scale okay and number six here is uh, to provide the value addition to the milk right so the most important point or the most important thing uh, when you produce a horticulture be it in agriculture crops or anything the value chain uh, value addition is the most important because that's going to create or uh, give you more income side income or any income uh, better so that it doesn't go into waste as well as you can still generate the money even after the post harvest right so do they want to provide this value addition to the milk through they want to uh, do it through the processing as well as production of these milk products okay so these are the main uh, six objectives under this uh, okay so here we're going to talk about the beneficiaries basically who's going to benefit and who can avail these uh, who can avail the benefits from this scheme okay so first thing is always the farmers right so farmers it can always be, it can be an uh, individual entrepreneurs uh, and a group of unorganized and organized sector as well okay so a group of organized sector they would include all these uh, shgs right so which are self-help groups we have daily cooperative societies as well and we have milk unions milk federation panchayati raj systems as well so all these will be the beneficiaries for this scheme okay so basically uh, another thing is that this an applicant they will be eligible to avail the assistance for all the components under the scheme but only once for each component okay so they can do it they can avail this assistance only once 
for each component okay not more than once all right and the third uh, second one here is that more than one member of the family they can assist and uh, they can be assisted under the scheme provided they set up a separate unit with separate infrastructure at different locations okay so it means that they can have a family uh, more than uh, in a family more than one can avail this scheme right they can avail the benefits from this scheme but then they have to uh, have a separate infrastructure as well as in a different location so it cannot be in this under the same roof or it cannot be under the same location okay so basically the distance between the boundaries of these two such farms should be at least 500 meter distance okay so there should be a 500 meter between these two farms or between these two infrastructures so a number a third point here is that mostly is that the priority will also be given to this project being implemented in mostly in a cluster mode covering the dairy farmers, uh, women in the SHG, SHGs as well as in the cooperatives or producer companies as well. Okay, and fourth one here is that they would also give the priority to the SC, ST women, landlay, landless, small and marginal, below poverty line, farmers and also farmers in the drought areas. Okay, so basically these are the um, beneficiaries or the people or group who will be able to avail these scheme okay right so uh these are something about it and now let's move on to our question series now okay so when did this dairy develop entrepreneurship development scheme start okay so when did they start the options given here our number a is uh september 2006 number b is march 2010 we also have c which says september 2010 and d says october 2015 and number e says june 2009 okay guys so the right answer for this is um september 2010 all right and now let's just check into the background of this whole scheme how did it all start up okay and firstly that you need to remember here is that there's a dairy a development the dairy entrepreneurship development scheme dads the it was launched on the year of 2010 okay it was launched on september 1st right so the main objective was to generate uh, self-employment opportunities especially in the dairy sectors in the country uh, and the second thing that you guys need to remember here is that the department or uh, of animal husbandry dairy and the fisheries they actually launched a pilot scheme na named this venture capital scheme for dairy and poultry okay so it was launched in the year of 2020 20, 2005 to 20, 2006 okay and it was launched with an outlay of rupees uh, 25 crore right so but then later this uh, department of animal husbandry dairying and fisheries they changed its name to this dairy entrepreneurship development farm so the after that they changed its name to this one to and it was renamed in this year of september 2010 okay so why they made it, it was mostly to uh, make it more effective through wider coverage enhance component uh, wise outlays as well as by including a component for a uh, for assistance under the scheme okay so that was one of the main reason why uh, they started up this scheme right so basically uh <clears throat> So the new modified scheme, this one was started from the year of uh, 2010 on September. Okay, guys. So remember that. So um, another thing, another. Let's go to another slide, okay, guys. So which of the following activities will be covered under this DEDS? Okay, guys. So the options given here are number A is dairy farm unit, number B says vermicomposting, and number C is a cold storage unit, private veterinary clinic, and number E says all of the above. Uh, out of these, which of the following activities will be covered under the DADS? Okay, so under this scheme, what are the activities that will be covered under this DADS? So um, the options given here, uh, you've already seen the right answer is all of the above as the activities of dairy farm unit vermicomposting cold storage unit as well as the private veterinary clinic all these components are the activities or these are all the activities which will come under the scheme okay guys so i've also jotted down some of the all the activities which will be covered under this deds okay so listen uh, to this carefully uh, so if the first one here establishments of the unit the small dairy unit for unit for two to ten milk animals so uh, when we're talking about this milk animals we basically mean all those domestic or the cow uh, animals right so or the 
So basically, when we talk about this milch animal, it means the cow or any domestic animals which we rear for the milk purpose, okay? So they can have established a small dairy farm of about 2 to 10 uh, milch animals, okay? So another one here is that uh, we also have to rearing of the heifers, so onto 20 calves, okay? And we also have vermicomposting. So this is can be tricky, but vermicomposting is also another activity which will be coming under this DEDS, okay guys? Um, another thing here is the purchase of milking machines. We also have milk testers and BMCs up to 5,000 liter capacity, right? So we also have a uh, purchasing of this milk processing equipment for manufacture of the indigenous milk products as well and we also have transportation as well as the cold storage facilities because these are also important once you produce the milk if there is no transportation then how will it reach the consumers right so we also need a cool storage facilities for a better post harvest management so that it, we can increase its shelf life all right and another one here is that establishment of private veterinary clinics as well so any person with a um so if you want to start up a private veterinary clinics you can also uh, will also come under this scheme okay and we can also have this uh, milk parlor for enhancement of the milk production as well as with the procurement and the last one is a very important one which is the post harvest technology and handling okay so what will come under this post harvest technology and handling under this will be uh, your cold chain and transportation facilities will also come on this we also have a processing and marketing of the milk as well as all the milk products okay so all these things will come under the post harvest as well, handling especially okay so these are some of the activities which will be under the um, deds scheme and now let's look more into it okay guys uh, let's go to another question so another question says dairy entrepreneurship development scheme uh, was done to generate the self-employment opportunities in the dairy sector in the country okay guys so which of the following is a nodal agency for the scheme so you need to select a nodal agency for the scheme so the first one is department of animal husbandry and daring we also have department of agriculture research and development uh, number c state bank of india number d is the bark and number e says none of the above okay guys so the right answer for this is d which is nabart which is also known as the national bank for agriculture and rural development so this nabart is the nodal agency for uh, implementation of this scheme okay all right and there are other implementing agencies as well so cooperative banks we also have regional banks or and urban banks as well and we also have the state agriculture and rural development bank and commercial banks so any other such institutions which are eligible uh, for the refinance from this debate uh, will implement this scheme right and this scheme is open to all the organized sector as well as all the unorganized sector okay so it is not only confined to the organized sector so even unorganized sectors they can also uh, get refinanced from this nabart uh, to implement this scheme all right so these are something about this implementing agency so guys i hope this is clear right and, and now let's move on to another slide where we're going to talk about some of the pattern assistance under this okay so basically there's a back-end capital subsidy of about 25 percent for the project cost especially for the general category okay so for 20, uh, 25 percent will be given for the general category as well as 33 percent we've already talked about right for the sc or st farmers okay and we're going to talk about the entrepreneur contributions for and they will be for loan, loans beyond rupees like so that'll be about 10 percent of the project cost will be uh, given by the um, will be assisted by the board okay and this subject can be revision uh, this subject to any revision will be done through this RBI guidelines, okay? And some of the things that uh, the GNT here is that for rearing of the here for calves, we have rupees, uh, rupees 9 lakh for 20 calf units with an upper limit of about 20 calves, okay? And for purchasing of the milk machines or milk co testers, bulk milk cooling units, which is also known as the BMCs, okay? So they'll be up to the 5,000 liter capacity, right? So this will be given rupees 20 lakh. For purchasing of the dairy uh, equipment of manufacturers of in uh, of indigenous milk products will be about rupees uh, 13 point 20 lakh okay so these are some of the things on 
this DEDS. Okay, guys, so let's go to our next question. So when was this national program for dairy development launched? Okay, so for this question, I would like all of you guys to answer. Drop it in the comment section if you guys have any ideas. Okay, guys, uh, number A is 2014. Number B says 2010. Number C is 2018. Number D is 2011. And number E is 2015. Okay, so out of these uh, uh, year, when was this national program for uh, dairy development launched? Okay, so let me just give you a brief uh, overview about this national uh, program for dairy development. Okay, we structured scheme titled uh, for this particular program is national program for bovine breeding and dairy development okay this also has two main two components which is the first one is national program for bovine breeding as well as national program for dairy development okay guys so um so these are some of the things on a brief overview of this uh, development program so in that we try to uh, learn all the programs as well as all the schemes under this dairy uh, under this dairy or animal husbandry okay you try to get it more clear when it was launched we've in previous video we already talked about what to learn in every scheme right so the first one is always the launching date who's in a noodle agency under this right and we also have to study all the objectives as well as what are the benefits fisheries and the assistance that they'll be getting or the benefits that they'll be getting from this that particular scheme all these are very important as well as you need to update keep on updating yourself with the um, latest updates from these schemes okay so that in that way like even if any questions from the latest updates comes you'll be able to answer them properly and you'll be able to do well in the exams better okay so these are some of the um, things for today i hope it's clear if you guys want to learn more under uh, animal husbandry or and uh, daring so do let let us know in the comment section and drop it in the comment section i'll try to take the suggestion and we'll try to create another session proper session right uh, related to uh, animal husbandry as well so i hope today's lecture was clear and that's all for today so if you guys are new again to this channel please don't forget to subscribe and you can also press the bell icon for further notifications from our um, content from our channel so that you won't miss out any of those important uh, lectures or sessions that we upload in our channel okay and if you guys have liked the session with me don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and we'll be meeting for the next session within another topic Okay, so till then, you guys take care and uh, study well, and we'll be meeting for the next session.